Alright, this video is on simplifying radicals. Uh, so make note, first off, of a couple of properties. Property 1 here says that we have the root of a product, that that can be written as the product of the individual roots. And it works you know, the other way as well. This is what allows us to go, say, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 equals the square root of 6. Right? Because they're both square roots, and so we can multiply the two radicands together and get the square root of 6. Now the reason why this works is, well, this could also be written as 2 to the 1 half times 3 to the 1 half because square roots are the same thing as raising it to the 1 half power. Well this from a property of exponents can be written as 2 times 3 to the 1 half and that gives us 6 to the 1 half which we know is the square root of 6. So this is the reason kind of why inside here that this works out the way that it does. But we're just going to write it as the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 goes to the square root of 6. And vice versa, we can go the square root of 6 can be rewritten as the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Right, so then the second property is the root of a quotient is the same thing as the quotient of um, the two roots. And notice that the denominator here can't be 0. Alright, so we're going to use these properties to help us simplify radicals. So before we do that, let's make note that a radical expression is simplified when, one, there are no perfect roots in the radicand. What that means is if we're taking the square root of, of something, the radicand cannot have any perfect squares in there. If we're taking the cube root of something, then we can't have any perfect cubes um, in the radicand. You know, if we're doing a fifth root, then no perfect fifth powers in the radicand. So forth. All right. Number two, we don't want any fractions or negative numbers in the radicand. And number three, there are no radicals in the denominator of a fraction. So to, uh, for a radical expression to be simplified, it's got to meet all three of these criteria. All right, so here's an example. All right, so the square root of 12. Well, in order to simplify um, radicals, you need to look for perfect roots. So in this case, since the square roots, we're going to look for perfect squares that are divisible into 12. So you can make that list from that previous video. We, we talked about a list of perfect squares and perfect cubes. This is where they're going to come in handy. So we look for the largest perfect square that divides into 12 evenly. Well, that would be the number 4. And so the square root of 12 can be rewritten as the square root of 4 times 3. Everybody agree that's true, right? And then by the pro property we just had on the previous screen, we can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the reason why we do that is because now we can say, all right, the square root of 4, well, we know what that is. That's 2. And the radical 3, well, that's just, you know, radical 3. So this just goes to 2 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 12 simplifies down to 2 times the square root of 3. Now, I agree, it doesn't really look any simpler than the square root of 12 does, right? But it meets those, those three criteria for um, a radical expression being simplified. Okay, so let's do... Oh, let's do another one. Say we've got the square root of 18. So again, you're looking for the largest perfect square, we have the square root, that divides into 18 evenly. Well, that would be 9. Right? 9 and what give you 18? Well, 9 and 2, right? So that would be the square root of 9 times 2, which goes to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which equals 3 times the square root of 2. Anybody follow what I'm getting at? Okay. And... Uh, let's do one more. Number three would be the square root of 48. So the largest perfect square that divides into 48 would be 16. And 16 times 3 is 48. Now I'm going to skip this step right here and say, alright, the square root of 48 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Because that's where we want to get to anyway, right? And that gives us 4 times the square root of 3. If you need to put in this, this step right here, right, by all means do so. If not, you can just jump straight from, say, the square root of 18 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 and go about your merry way. Right? So what about, say, something like the square root of 5 ninths? Well, we notice that we've got a fraction under, in the radicand, and so it's not completely simplified. So we can use that second property to write it as the square root of 5 over the square root of 9. And that would give us, well, the square root of 5 is just the square root of 5. Whatever some decimal number that is. But the square root of 9 is 3. Because we remember we don't want any radicals in the denominator of a fraction. Right? And that would be as simplified as we get it. Everybody following me? Let's do a couple more. All right, what about, say, this one? The cube root of 24. So now since we're talking cube roots, we're looking for the largest perfect cube that divides into 24 evenly. So think about your list of perfect cubes. 
We say, all right, well, that's 8. So we can rewrite this as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 8 times what? Gives you 24, well, 3. And then the cube root of 8 gives us 2, and the cube root of 3 just stays the cube root of 3. Now you must have this 3 inside the index here to denote cube root, because if that 3 is missing, then it's understood to be what? That's right, a square root, and that's not what we mean here. Right? So you must write the index in the wedge there when it's something other than a 2. All right, so building us up to where we're going, what about, say, the square root of x to the 8th? Now, square root of x to the 8th, recall the property x to the m over n equals the nth root of x to the m. Remember, that was one of the forms that x to the m over n could be written as. Well, we're going to go backwards. Right? So we say the index here is 2, and the exponent on the radicand is 8. So really, we can rewrite that going, going backwards here as x to the 8 divided by the index 2, which just gives us x to the 4th when we do it. So the square root of x to the 8th is just x to the 4th. Everybody see how that's working? All right, I want to do one more like that, the cube root of y to the 6th equals. All right, well, what do you think? Well, equals y to the 6 over 3, which is y squared. That's all great if the exponent divided by the index you know, is even. You know, 6 over 3 gives you 2, 8 over 2 gives you 4, if it's even. The problem comes when uh, that does not happen. All right, so from, from here on out, we're going to assume that um, all variables represent uh, positive values. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that absolute value thing that we talked about in the previous video. Okay, so for example, the square root of x cubed. All right, so the way to simplify up these to find those perfect roots, in this case a perfect square that's underneath the radical, is to look at the exponent on the variable and the index of the radical. radical. If the exponent on the radicand is greater than or equal to the index, then we can simplify this farther. If the exponent on the radicand divides evenly by the index, then you just do that division, and like we did in the previous two examples, and, and you're done. If it doesn't, then we want to look for the largest number, less than the 3 here, less than the exponent 3, that does divide evenly by your index. Well, your index here is square root, so your index is 2. So the largest number less than 3 that divides by 2 would be 2. So we can rewrite this as the square root of x squared times the square root of x. And everybody agree the square root of x squared times the square root of x gives you x cubed? Right. And we did, we did this on purpose, so this first part right here, the square root of x squared, would just go down to x. And this is where we don't need the absolute value bars because we're assuming that x um, is a positive number in general. Okay. So the square root of x cubed simplifies down to x times the square root of x. Right, let's try another one. How about, say, the square root of 25x cubed? Right. Well, the way I like to separate it up is um, we're going to have perfect squares and non-perfect squares. Okay, so perfect squares in the first part, non-perfect squares in the second radical. All right, so 25. Ah, that's a perfect square. So that's going to go over here, so 25 x cubed, not, but we can separate that up into x squared and x from the previous example. And then the square root of the perfect squares, it's what's going to simplify down. So the square root of 25x cubed goes to 5x times the square root of x. How about, say, the cube root of 40y to the eighth. Okay, so now we're looking for perfect cubes, right? So the largest, so we got 40 to deal with. 40 is not a perfect cube, so we look for the largest perfect cube that divides evenly into into 40, which would be 8, right? So that lets us know that we're going to separate this up. 8, 8 and what? That's right, 5. Okay, now we need to look at the y. You got y to the 8th. Well, the exponent 8 there that's on the y does not divide evenly by your index. Okay? But 
8, the, the exponent here, is bigger than your index, so we know we can simplify this up. So, for the variables here, you look for the largest number less than 8, less than this exponent, that is divisible by 3. And that number would be 6. So that means we can separate this up into y to the 6th and y squared. Everybody see that? And then that lets us go, the cube root of 8y to the 6th would be um, 2, y squared, because 6 divided by 3 gives you the 2, and then all that's times the cube root of 5y squared. And you're done. Okay, that's how we're going to simplify. There are no perfect cubes that are inside the radicand now. I think we should try another one. All right, 4. How about the cube root of x to the 16th, y to the 11th? All right, so we say 16 does not divide by the index evenly, so we can separate this up. We find the largest number less than 16 that does divide by 3, and that number would be 15, so we have x to the 15th. And so x to the 15th times what gives you x to the 16th? That's right, x to the 1st. And we got y to the 11th. We say, all right, 11. So the largest number less than 11 that divides by 3 would be 9. So we're going to have y to the 9th over here. And how many are left over? Well, 2. So you'd have y squared over here. And then you simplify up this first radical. The cube root of x to the 15th, y to the 9th, would be x to the 5th, y cubed. And then times the cube root of x, y squared. Everybody see that? All right, so let's do let's do one more. So we have the square root of b to the ninth over 64 a to the twelfth. All right. First thing we notice we've got um, a fraction in the radicand. All right. So separate that up into the using the property number the second property there into the square root of b to the ninth over the square root of 64 a to the twelfth. And then we say, all right, so the square root of b to the ninth, well, 9 is bigger than your 2, so we're able to simplify it. So the largest number less than 9 that divides evenly by 2 would be an 8. So we rewrite this as the square root of b to the eighth times the square root of b. So that's all on top. And on bottom, You've got what? Uh, square root of 64, a to the 12th. Well, 64 is a perfect square, right? And a to the 12th. Well, 12 divides by your index evenly. So we can actually simplify this up on the bottom, right? Square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of a to the 12th is a to the 6th, right? Because 12 divided by 2 gives you 6. So all we have left to do is um, simplify the numerator. So the square root of b to the 8th would be b to the 4th. So all that's times the square root of b, all over 8, a to the 6th. All right, so it'll take a little bit of practice, but uh, we're going to use this idea to, uh, to help us add and subtract radicals next. We're going to need to simplify them first uh, before we can add and subtract them. We'll see what happens with that in the next video. All right, so make sure you uh, understand this concept uh, and practice. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.